Master, for all that you've done for us. Thank you for allowing us to see another Sunday morning. And I pray, God, for churches all over this land and country that are held in your name. Have your way in this service today. And I pray, God, you would baptize my mind and my lips and my thoughts that what I say and preach today will be pleasing in your sight. And mankind can be saved. And this is my own prayer that I do pray. In Jesus' name and for his sake I do pray. Amen. 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 To God be the glory for the magnificent and wonderful things that he is doing for all of us today. And I know you are wondering and looking at me and wondering what am I going to preach? And I'm wondering if you're going to pray. Because I know if you pray, God will always give us a word. And today, God has blessed me, impregnated me with a word inside that will be very, very much conducive for all of us today. And I want all of us to be in prayer. And, and, and thinking about God and keeping him on your mind. And I want you to know that today I want to come from the book of Psalms. I want to come from the book of Psalms this morning. And matter of fact, that Psalms is the 141. 141st Psalms. I want to go to that this morning. And today I want you to be in prayer. Pray for me as I try to deliver this word. A Psalm of David. Lord, I cry unto thee. Make haste unto me. Give ear unto my voice when I cry unto thee. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense and the lifting of my hands as the evening sacrifice. And let me read that again because I want to pull a text from, from this verse. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. I want to use for a subject, uh, a thought, the importance, the strength, and the authority of prayer. In other words, I broke it down, the, the, the priority, the power, and the privilege, the, the importance which is the priority, the, the strength, which is the power, and the authority, which is the privilege of, of prayer. And today I'm going to be talking about how important it is to pray and how we should pray often. The Bible say in season and out of season. And there is power, power in prayer. I can hear David say, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. 
In, in other words, he shall not let my foot be moved. He that watches us shall not slumber nor sleep. That's, that, that's a, a, a scripture coming out of the book of Psalms. The book of Psalms is probably the largest body of writings in the Bible. And within that book of Psalms, Psalms covers every aspect of human life. Everything within human life, you can find some relief in the book of Psalms. There's some scripture, one favorite scripture that all of us know is the 23rd Psalm that says, The Lord is my shepherd. And I, <clears throat> I don't know about you, but I've said that Psalm many, many times over again. Sometimes when I get in a situation and I don't know what to do, I say, the Lord, the Lord. And you got to know this for yourself. you got to be able to feel it within you that when you say the Lord is my shepherd, you, you, you got to know that for yourself. You know, mama may know, papa may know, but God bless the child that knows these things for himself. I know I'm talking to somebody here today. Somebody's out there with some stress that's, that's, that's comprising their mind, some, some stress that they are dealing with, some issues that's coming up. And I want you to know the best weapon to combat warfare is prayer. You need to know the, the, the benefits of prayer, the importance of prayer. And here in Psalms 141, we see where David is praying to the Lord because of the enemies that's trying to attack David. And David is praying for God to come quickly and be able to hear him. In other words, he wants his prayers to rise up to the Lord just like a, 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 a sweet-smelling incense that smells good to the Lord. And, and he wants his sacrifices, his prayers to be like a sacrifice when he raises his hands up to the Lord that God will approve of what he's doing. It'd be a joy to the Lord to see someone giving up and recognizing without you, God, I'm nothing, giving him sacrifice. David was one that hurried up and give God sacrifice. But I know, I know this morning, I want you to know that in my uh, prophetic spiritual mind, I feel, I feel the tug of somebody out there that's, that's going through some stuff. Somebody that's listening this morning, heart is filled with anguish. Somebody this morning is in a place where they never thought they would be in life. And here they are, right there, wondering what to do. They, 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 they understand they got a plan. God has his plan. And they feel like they are stuck in the middle. They feel like they are caught between the rock in the hard place. And all you can do in a situation like that is, is pray. It's go to God in prayer and let God know what you're thinking and what you're feeling and watch what God will do to you. Anybody ever been there? Anybody ever been to a spot where the heat is so hard on you, you, you can't pray? Sometimes you can't even get a word out. You want to pray, and, and you want to come to God, but the pressure is so hard on you that it's hard for you to even think. And all you can say is, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And God knows what to do from there. Uh, but I stopped by to tell you, if you are caught in a situation like that, God is allowing this pressure 
this intense pressure to come upon you in order to draw you closer to him. Because this pressure will make you pray more. This pressure will make you be more humble more. This pressure will make you look up and see where your help comes from. So God allows this pressure to come upon you that will draw you to him. And I want you to say this, that prayer for the believer is needed. It's very important. Prayer for the believer is very important. It is a priority. And let me say it again. Prayer for the believer is very important. It is prioritized in your life. That's what you should do. It shouldn't be an afterthought. It's nothing that you just had happily just going to pray. You, you, you don't do when you ain't got nothing else to do, then you go to praying. No, no. Prayer, it, it, it's not like a spare time. That you only use it when life goes flat in your life. No, prayer is something you should do at all times. The Bible says we ought to always pray. We ought to always look to God for our help because this is a daily walk, a daily talk with God. God may be strengthening your prayer life by allowing these troubles, these pressures to come your way because God knows if he just bless us all the time and not allow trials and tribulations to fall upon us. He know we'll be just like sheep. We're prone to wander. We'll wander away. But long as trials and tribulations come to us, it'll keep us closer in line with what God wants us to do. So we ought to pray in season and out of season. Pray Throughout the day. Don't, don't just wait for something to happen to pray. Pray when everything is good. Pray for your family. Pray for your school. Pray for your church. Pray for the shortfalls in your life. God give us the ability to pray. How many know that we need prayer? Because if you're working on a job with co-workers and working with supervisors and everybody don't have the spirit of God within them, they have some ugly attitudes and you can be on your job and you say, here they come now. You, Lord, give me the strength that I won't say the wrong thing. Because sometimes you feel like slapping them and that's not God. And so God help me to hold my attitude. Help me to hold my composure. Help me to keep this job because the devil is trying to make me lose my job. You have to pray and God will step in. And I want you to know that there is power, there is strength in prayer. When you pray, there's strength in prayer. Because looking at the Bible, as we go back, we remember when Hezekiah turned his back to the wall and he was at the point of death and he turned his back to the wall and prayed to God and God added 15 more years onto his life. There's power in prayer. Even my sister Hannah, Hannah in the Bible, you know, she was barren and she couldn't have a child and, and everybody was picking on her and, and she went to God in prayer. Sincere prayer. And God opened up her womb and she was able to have a son called named Samuel. God answers prayer. But let me tell you this. When you're praying to God, make sure what you're praying for is lining up with the will of God and, and pray in his will. And when you pray in his will, things will fall in place. I don't have to go back to the Bible with Hannah and, and Hezekiah. I can say for my life, 
I call on God and God has opened doors for me. God has blessed me. God has made ways out of no ways for me. He has helped me in times of stress, times of situation. I call on his name and God can wait on him. I can understand because the Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And one thing you need to know that when you're talking to God and trusting in God, you, you, you don't, if you're going to pray, don't worry. And if you're going to worry, don't pray. Because God is in control. He got you. And when you be able to pray to God and talk to God, you'll be able to wait on him for him to come through. Because he doesn't always come when you call him. But how many know he's always Always on time. He's a God that I know. He never, never let you down. But I want you to know that there are some people that in our family, church family, that, that they're real private. They don't want you to know nothing about them. They don't want you to know if they're sick. They don't want you to know. And I, I can understand some of the reason that they stand behind they don't want you to know. I do understand but we should be as a church family, as a body of people, if one of us are hurt, we ought to be able to know about it, to be able to pray for that particular person. But I do understand why some of the reasons people don't want everybody to know. Because everybody don't have the God-like spirit and won't tell it the same way that it was told. They add something to it. So I do understand, but I want you to know this about me on my part. If you ever hear that I'm sick, I, I want you to pray for me. I don't care whether you're gay, straight, or in between. If you know the Lord and get a relationship with God, you pray for me. I don't care whether you're Islamic, Hindu, wherever you come from. If you know the Lord, pray for me. Because I'm standing in the need of prayer. Now, 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 now we know that, 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 that prayer is important. There's a priority in prayer. And we know that prayer has power. There's strength in prayer. And not only is there strength in prayer, but I want you to know but there is a privilege in prayer, which is an authority that God has given us the authority to call out things that are not as if they were. In other words, he said in the book of John, you can ask what you will in my name, and I will give it to you. So he has given us that authority and privilege to be able to pray in his name. Am I right about it? Prayer, when you, when, let me tell you this. Prayer is not telling God what to do. Prayer is not informing God. God already know what you're going through. He already know what's going to happen to you before you were born. So you're not informing God. God knows about your struggle. And what God wants you to do, he wants you to line up your struggles with his will. If you line your struggles with his will and your will become his will, you can walk through the valley of the shadows of death and not fear any evil because your will is lining up with his will. In other words, my will can't be bigger than God's will. My will have to be under God's will in order for them to work. Am I right about that? We got to be under his will. Some of us should be thanking God for some of the prayers that he did not answer. Some of us ought to be thanking him right now. God, I am so thankful. For you blessing me not to get that job when it first came available. Because by me waiting, I found a better job. 
Lord, I, I thank you for not allowing me to get that car because I found a better car later. We ought to be praying and thanking God for so many unanswered prayers that God did that he didn't answer. That's why God is so good to us. He knows better what we need than we know ourselves. That's why our trust is in the Lord. That's why we ought to pray. That's why we, we, we go through so much trials and tribulation <clears throat> because we don't pray. Oh, what, what, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what pain we often bear. All because we do not carry not some things, but everything to God in prayer. There's some things you go through that you don't have to go through if you would go to God in prayer. God will help you to navigate through these things. In other words, you got to learn how to pray. King David prayed, Oh, have mercy on me, O oh God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercy, and, and, and according to uh, my iniquities, I, and, and pray that you would wash me thoroughly from my iniquities and cleanse me up from my sins. David prayed constantly. He prayed, I will lift up mine eyes into the hills from which cometh my help. David prayed constantly, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? In other words, when the wicked come upon me, they eat up my flesh. They stumble and they fall. In other words, if the Lord be for you, who can be against you? I want you to know that I'm counting and I'm serving the Lord. And I am, I am so glad that somebody prayed for me. I am so glad that somebody had me on their mind and took the time and prayed for me. Because if they hadn't prayed for me, I wouldn't be where I am now. And old folks say, if you pray and you pray right, God will bring you out. And how many know God will bring you out? And I want you to know, no matter what's going on in the world today, stay with the Lord. God is on the throne. And he will come and lift you up. And I am so thankful Realizing that God blesses me, which is this weak vessel, he has his treasure in this earthing vessel, and I, I, I'm weak, and I'm not all that. I, I, I mess up sometimes, but God still trusts me to stand in this pulpit every Sunday morning and preach his word. He, 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 he holds me. He guides me. And not only does he guide me, but he will guide you if you hold on to him. And I want you to know that pray with me and pray for me. Much prayer, much power. Little prayer, little power. No prayer, no power. I want you to know that praying is the key. Pray for your family. Husbands, pray for your wives. Pray for your children. Pray for your enemies. Wives, pray for your family. Pray for your aunts and your uncles and your husband. Pray for even pray for your enemies. Pray for those that misuse you. Pray for those that don't like you. Pray for those that call you everything but a child of God. Keep God first in your life. And when you learn to turn your eyes to the hills, whence cometh your help. Don't worry about people setting traps for you. 
Don't worry about people lying on you. You pray for them. God said that, that, that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. When you're walking in the Lord's way, the steps of a good man is ordered by the Lord. Even though it looks like the world may be falling down around you, but if you stay with the Lord and stay on the Lord's side, everything's going to be all right. I want you to know that there, there is importance and priority in prayer. I want you to know that there is a power and there is strength in prayer. I want you to know that there is a privilege and there is an authority in prayer. Stay with the Lord. Don't let the world tear you down. Don't let the world destroy you. Don't let the world turn you around. Stay on the Lord's side and watch what God will do. He'll pull you out. He'll turn you around. Do you know him this morning? You know the one I'm talking about this morning. The one that Herod tried to destroy before he was two years old. Herod tried to kill Jesus. But how many know you can't kill the Messiah? God is God all by himself. You can't kill him because he walked eight furlongs to the joy just to be baptized of John. How many know he spoke to the wind and the wind obeyed? How many know all he got to do is speak the word and everything will come to fruition? And he blessed us. He gave that word in us. The same power he gave his 12 disciples. The same power he gave the 70. The same power he gives every believer that you can just speak things as not as if they were. In the name of our Lord and Jesus the Christ. Those who are listening this morning, start speaking stuff in Jesus' name. Stand on his word. Say, Lord, you say it in your word that all I got to do is speak it and it will come to fruition. God will honor his word. Start using it. The power is in you. God put the power in you. Speak it. And watch things start coming to fruition. In Jesus' perfect and pure name, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Remember the importance, which is a priority. Remember the strength, which is power. And remember the authority, which is the privilege that God has given to all of us. And be able to implement that in your daily life. Teach your children, teach your friends, because we are equipped with everything we need to be successful in this life. We're gonna have some ups and downs, but this only to make us stronger. As long as we stay with the Lord, stay on his side, he'll watch us and pull us through. And if there's anyone out there listening this morning that may be contemplating coming and giving their life to Christ, I want you to know that this is your opportune time because Christ said, come just as I am. And I want you to know that, that your life can be jacked up. Don't you try to unjack it before you come to Christ. Come just as you are. As it says, just as I am. Just as I am. Without one plea, come, 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 just say, bring all your baggage to the Lord and give it to him and let God untangle it. Because the importance of salvation, nobody wants to live on this earth, catch hell living here and die and go to hell. You don't want to do that because that's eternity. But if you're listening to me, I want you to know I want to take you down the Romans Road. And Romans Road come to start at 3 and 10. 
where it say it is written there is there is none righteous of our own none of us are righteous of our own it's already written from the pulpit to the back door none of us is righteous no not one let's go to Romans 3 and 23 because it is written that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now I can speak this boldly. Those who are listening, I can say, well, I don't know you, but you have sinned. You may say, well, how do you know I've sinned? Because the Bible tells me so. All have sinned and come short of his glory. But I want to let you know how much God loves you. Go to Romans 5 and, and 8. It says, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died. In, in other words, in other words, he didn't wait for us to stop sinning. He went ahead and died while we were still sinners. That's how much he loved and cared for us. And then after his commitment. Let me tell you about sin. Sin pays dividend, but the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. If we stay in our sins, we're going to die in our sins. But if we give our life to Christ, we'll have eternal life. And let's move to Romans 10 and 9. Because if thou shalt confess with thy mouth Jesus as Lord, and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If you believe that, you shall be saved. And it goes on to say that in, in Romans 10 and 13, he opened up the door wide. For whosoever, whosoever, and everybody is under the whosoever, shall call upon the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, shall be saved. And I want you to repeat these words after me. If you are ready to give your life to Christ, now is appropriate time. If you're hearing this, God has allowed this time for you because he didn't want you to die and go to hell. He placed this on your heart and he's tugging at your heart. I want you to repeat with me and raise your arms to, toward the sky. And say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner saved by grace. Have mercy on me. And say, Lord, I do believe that you died for my sins. And I do believe that God raised you from the dead. And I do believe you're sitting on the right hand side of God the Father. And I believe you are perpetuating for my sins. And you died for my sins in the past. The sins that I may commit right now in the present. And the sins I may commit in the future. Father, forgive me. And don't let me have a, a, a reason to sin. Because you said in your word that, that we got to reap what we sow. If you pray that prayer with me today, you are saved. And by you being saved, you won't reach hell. But I want you to find you a Bible-based church. I want you to get in that church. And I want you to learn and study God's Word. Start coming to Sunday school and Bible study. And the more you pick up, the more you learn about God, the more he will reveal himself to you. And he has given all of us a measure of faith at birth to start off with. And if you, if you are that person, 
you, you start doing that. But if you can't find a church or don't have a church, you can always come here at St. John, 1282 Bradford Heights Road, Gastonia, North Carolina. And if you got saved by just listening and repeating what I said today, and you don't have a church family, give me a call. And, and my phone number here at the church is 704. Did you uh, exchange foreign with you? And if I'm not there, leave a, a message as to where I can reach you, and I will return the call and give you that certificate of salvation and help you on the way to be a member of this church here at St. John. And we may do it through technology. God has designed technology for us to work with. And we are so thankful and helpful for that. And if the word today was, was good and appealing to you, and you, and you want to give a donation, I want you to know you can do that. You can give a donation by way of cash. You can bring it by and drop it in the church uh, during our church hours, 10 o'clock through 11 o'clock. Or you can uh, write a check and mail it in to the address you had, 1282 Bradford Heights Road, Gastonia, North Carolina, 28054, uh, St. John Missionary Baptist Church. Or you can pay by on your credit card, PayPal, uh, Givelify. So, and if you don't have any money at all, you still pray for us. Pray for this ministry, that it would flourish, that we would be what God would have it to be. Pray for insights. And I want you to know that there's nothing free. And by your giving to God's work, giving to his ministry, God will definitely give back to you. Whatever amount God places on your heart, you give it to this church. Give it to St. John and watch how God will, in return, give it back to you more than you gave to him. Not necessarily in financial income. It can be in health and strength. It can be in peace of mind. It can be in a job. God has all kind of ways of blessing you, and he will do that by you giving and trusting in him, he will give back to you. So let's go into God for a moment of prayer. Uh, pray for those who may have given their life to Christ. Let's go to prayer. Gracious Lord, our Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for those who may have given their lives to you this morning. And we pray for those, God, who, if they didn't give it today, maybe their heart has been pricked and you have it heavily on their heart. Bless all of those who are listening to this service today, that they will apply their prayer life, they would instill their prayer life, they would enhance their prayer life. And God, we thank you, and thank you for all of those who, who have given their life to you. Bless the bereaved families, and bless all of those, God. Bless the, the one that mail funds in, bless their money, bless their income, bless their tithes, and bless their efforts. In Jesus' perfect and pure name, I do pray. Amen. Now, as we get ready for our communion, this is the first Sunday, and we know we have communion on the first Sunday. And I know there's some out there who may not have the actual little wine or grape juice or whatever. But I want you to know, whatever you have, whatever you have, I want you to, to open it up. It can be bread. It can be crackle. It can be water. It can be milk or whatever liquids you have. We're going to consecrate it right now and, and bring it before God. And, and let us let us right now uh, go to God in prayer. Let's, let's, let's ask God to forgive us of all of our sins, forgive us of our shortcomings, and God help all of us to be better children for you. Father, we pray for these elements that we are about to take. We pray for this bread. And we pray for this liquids that we're about to drink. 
that it would be taken in the manner in which it was given. The bread represents the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the liquid represents the blood of our Lord and Jesus Christ. When Jesus was in the city, he sent two of his disciples went into the city, and he told them where to go. You see a man with a pitcher of water, ask him where is the guest chamber or the guest room that I may come and prepare this Passover. And when they got there, uh, they saw the man and he showed them an upper room and they prepared for the Passover meal. And when Jesus got there, he took bread, he broke it, and he said, take and eat. This is my body, which was broken for you. Take and eat. And likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And after he had blessed it, he said, this is my blood of the New Testament, which was shared for many. But as often as you partake of this, do it in remembrance of me. You may drink. And after they had performed and had the supper, they sung a hymn. And I want you to know that you meditate on what God has done to you. I want you to hold on, no matter how tough things may be, or how rough things may look. Hold on, a change is coming. God said it, he's gonna be there for us. Because he said, I will never, never leave you, nor will I forsake you. I'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. Say, hold on. A change is coming. Hold on. You can make it. Hold on, church. Everything's going